On February 20th, 2022, baby JJ was viciously attacked by his neighbor's five pit bulls in the front yard of his own home. I sat down with his parents, Jose and Cassandra Rodriguez, to discuss the accident and baby JJ's progress. Baby JJ has a long road ahead of him, and the family Rodriguez could use all the help they can get. If you would like to donate or contribute in any way towards justice for baby JJ, please see the show notes. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Hypocritical AF Podcast. I am your host, Albert Fig, and this week I am joined with Cassandra and Jose Rodriguez, the parents of baby JJ. First of all, I would like to say thank you guys. I don't think I can thank you guys enough <laughs> from like, you know, just opening up your arms to me yeah. and letting me come here. We're at the uh, Bethany Children's Hospital, for those that don't know. I got to tell you guys when, when I first, how I first got to... Um, not to necessarily know, but I first got the story for you guys and heard about the attack. When I first heard about what happened to baby JJ, I like my heart hurt. You know what I mean? It, it hurt like really bad. My stomach hurt and I felt really sick. And right away, I was just like, I, as a, you know, I tried putting myself in your guys' shoes as a parent as well. And I was like, I can't imagine what they're going through. You know what I'm saying? And then I found out that we're actually, you know, like in some type of way connected, like coming yeah. from like the same area that we have in Greenfield and King City. And then I find out even more like my sisters went to high school with you and yeah. then my sister knows you. And then we have friends that know each other and then family members and everything. And uh, so it, it was a cool little connection like that. And I want to get into when I first saw a photo yeah. of baby JJ. And I'll admit too, like selfishly, I feel I felt horrible. Even to this day too, I felt horrible because I didn't um initially want to jump on it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like when yeah. I first heard, when I yeah, first heard yeah. about it, I was like, I was like, wow, like I, all these emotions just went through like my mind, you know, of, of going through everything. And I was just like, I can't imagine what they're going through. And then like the next day, Lily was the one that told me, she goes, she goes, Oh, they have photos of the baby. And I was like, yeah. Don't, don't show yeah. me. My dad was like that too. Yeah, yeah. there's um there's there's a lot worse pictures out there than yeah. that we put out. Those oh, were wow. just the pictures yeah. that we were the, like. Those were the ones that were the most like acceptable to to post. Oh wow! Yeah. I couldn't even go to a like the bad side, the like the most hurt side. Yeah. To take pictures, I made him do it because we told each other for legal reasons we need to do the daily picture. That okay. was the well, worst right, part yeah, of my right, day. Right off the bat, like I. Um, one of the things that we knew was like uh, that we had to get justice for, for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, some people have asked too, like the picture of me in the car where I'm yeah. where I'm covered in his blood and stuff. They're yeah. like, why would you take a picture there? I cho I was like, we need to show people. Yeah. Like the what? the reason we took a picture this there was because we were preparing for the battle ahead. Mm. We knew yeah. mm -hmm. this was going to be because we know how he is too. Right. And we were like, you know, we need to make sure that there's record of this that the police see how we look because what if i don't know like what like just sweat washes it off or yeah. what if the doctors make us clean ourselves before we can go in or something you know i just and they did to make sure they did. and they actually did so good thing you they, took that yeah yeah they on. did because before before well actually before uh, i even got to take off mm -hmm. like um we when we had taken off but we got to the hospital and uh when i walked up there was a police officer there and he's just like, Hey, you, can't. you, need, you need to clean yourself off. You can't go in there like that. Wow. And also, cause like we went in and we we're like, where's JJ? Where's JJ? And yeah. they thought they're all, wait, what's going on? Are you hurt? Are you okay? For, uh, I guess it was more like for their, like for them yeah. to feel safe or for other people to not look at us like, what the heck is mm. wrong with that person? You know what I mean? Yeah. So to clean yourself up for everybody, that's pretty much what that was. And mm -hmm. I, I get, yeah, it's the images, like I said, that they have. And that's, yeah. like I said, when, when, when she was telling me about the pictures and everything, I, like I said, at first I was like, man, don't show me. I don't want to see it. And it took about like almost, almost a whole month, I think. And this is why I said, I, I feel guilty yeah. that saying that, like, I, I apologize. I didn't get to it sooner. And one time I'll tell you exactly where I, where I was at when I saw it. So I was at, I was working in San Francisco and I was on top of a building 
and I had time to kill. I was waiting for some stuff to, you know, to finish. And I was scrolling down Instagram, you know, yeah. and I saw my friend's wife, um, he, as one of my friends that I went to, to college at, in UTI at, in Sacramento, mm-hmm. his wife did like a repost. Yeah. And it was crazy because, you know, when you repost something on Instagram, you just see like a, a photo. You don't really see much of a description. You just yeah. see a photo. You know what I mean? Yeah. I saw a photo. And without even knowing that it was JJ, I knew that it was JJ. Yeah. Right. I just, I saw, and I just started crying. Yeah. Like I felt, I was like bawling, you know what I mean? And I felt bad because you see that and you're just like, wow, like how now I feel guilty that, you know, I didn't try to reach out about since beforehand. And then I just instantly just started following I messaged, and then I just started donating. And then I just, you know, I just thought about you know, as a parent, putting myself in your guys' situation and your guys' shoes, I was like, I can't imagine what they're going through. And then I, and then I find out that, you know, only, only, you have one job, but you have seven. So it's like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot to, <laughs> you know, to take in. And it's like, how are they going to, all these questions are going through my mind. It's like, yeah. how are they going to manage this? How are they going to take care of this? The food, the travel, the money. Yeah. The and, beginning, the- and then, and then to top it off, there was a snowstorm, an ice storm. Wow. Yeah. So we weren't home. People's power was getting cut off. People's, um, like the pipes were freezing so they wow. didn't have water or there was just water and like frozen water everywhere. Mm. So that's also what was going on yeah. in our town. So it was like, my kids are out there with, you know, family, but mm-hmm. I mean, are they, are they cold? Are they warm? Are they safe? They're scared. They miss JJ. Mm-hmm. And I was breastfeeding my baby mm-hmm. and, but I needed to be with JJ too. So yeah. it was like, it was crazy. Yeah, the, the beginning was definitely, like you said, like uh, all this, all the things that you were thinking of. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, of too. In I the was, moment. Yeah, I was trying to figure out. Okay, what do I do? And then, um, so when the attack happened, it was. I mean, it was two o'clock. Mm. I was. Um, I was. I got in the shower real quick to to go to one of my other jobs. I worked two jobs, mm-hmm. and. Um, the ta- everything everything took place the attack the ho- the drive to the hospital the am- waiting for the ambulance to get there the police getting there everything all that happened and i i still had enough time to call in my job like before my start time my start time was 2:30 right yeah. and yeah. Uh, so that that kind of gives you a sense of how quickly everything took place wow, yeah. you know like i remember when i remember getting out of the shower and looking and it was it was 2 o'clock yeah you know and uh yeah, by the time I made the night when the call to my employer, yeah, it was it was like we were already two thirty, like and I was no, I was we were on the way to the hospital. Yes, yeah, we were on twenty third, yeah. uh, you know, and I was I was flying, bro. <laughs> they, they, they were, one of the things they told me was like, you know, calm down, you, you can't drive like this. But yeah. how are you gonna tell it to somebody like they had just minutes ago told me, you know, that he's dead. Yeah. So that that's what I was going to get into next, which was so the the day of the attack was February twentieth, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you can start with that, paint like the like how the day was going, how it unfolded, yeah. and how all this so, went down. Yeah. So I, um, Cassandra don't really like to do it. I usually, <laughs> I, I usually I'm I'm the one that's kind of been doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in February in Oklahoma, it's really cold. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've had a little bit of a warmer winter Mm -hmm. uh, but we had just had a cold spell and it was Sunday it was like bro it's like like in the movies yeah it's literally literally like every parent's worst nightmare Uh, like a straight movie scene it was it was a warm Sunday afternoon Mm -hmm. you hear your kids laughing outside you know it was just like really rare for it to be that warm in February so the kids were like can we play outside so we let them play in the front yard Mm -hmm. um just like any, any yeah, like any, would. like just like any other kid. Just you like know, all you, the other kids, right. there was other kids playing outside too yeah. on their own. When, uh, when JJ was attacked, he was enjoying a warm Sunday, playing with his giant teddy bear and his sisters in his front yard, picking flowers. Mm. Like we had these, like this fake flower bed, trying yeah. to make the house look nice, They're type like of thing, dead you know. Already. And so, <laughs> like, and then especially like in the news clips that you see. Mm-hmm. Um, You'll see the the teddy bear. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, laying that's there. That's where he was. That's where he was at, mm. as opposed to you, you know some of the, some said. of the other things mm. that are being said. Yeah, and, and I, you know, it kind of blows my mind like how that's overlooked. Like, right. You see his toys right there. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's yeah. it, it's it's just yeah. Um, so there were um, Sophia, Chloe, JJ, Delilah, 
and Elise were playing outside. Um, Elise had come in. Delilah, um, you guys have probably seen her for some of the videos. Mm-hmm. That's the little singer, the one that's always singing, yeah, yeah. kind of being goofy. Yeah, yeah. She's also really demanding. <laughs> <laughs> so she 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 wanted some chips. Yeah. And um, my oldest child was taking her to get some chips and some water. And then uh, Chloe and JJ were following. Mm-hmm. And that's when the dogs were let out. Mm-hmm. Um, the the kids saw the dogs and took off running. And JJ was the smallest he was just there. so they, so they grabbed the they grabbed jj baby. and then while all this was happening you know uh she was just she was just there she was just in the doorway watching them. i put the chips and the water on the table and i was putting i was breastfeeding olivia too but i was mm. i put the chicken in the oven because i knew you know when we take jose to work when by the time we come back it'll be done and i can yeah. feed the kids so that's what i did and then yeah, yeah we have a in. we have a like a big window in our living room yeah so like you could see directly where they were yeah, at and everything, and, and um, I I heard her go to the door because the, the the door has like a sensor and it goes mm-hmm. off. Yeah. So I heard the ding. Yeah. And then I hear I heard her telling him, "I'm gonna get your dad slippers." So mm-hmm. I'm I'm coming out of the shower, and uh, our house is real small. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I got out of the shower and it's I take maybe three steps and I hear snarling mm-hmm. and and barking, so. You know, we've already had issues with these dogs before. So the first thing I'm thinking is, oh, shit, they're attacking my dog mm-hmm. again. You know what I mean? So I I, uh, I ran to the window to go look, and the owner is yelling for help and tr- uh, trying to get his dogs. And uh, when I stick my head out, I see it's not my dog. I see it's JJ. Mm-hmm. And JJ's being dragged. And uh, she's like, I from right there, that moment, I kind of don't really remember much i i that whole little space right there is blank to me i just i just remember i just remember hitting the dog Mm -hmm. and um fighting the dogs and then like i remember the fight very vividly yeah but it's kind of like i just got there you know what i mean like i was at the window and next thing i know i'm i'm fighting these dogs and it's i also feel like it's it's important to clarify and and to make the people know that it was not just one dog. Yeah, it no. was five. It was full, like, five. Those full, full grown, five pit bulls. scary looking pit bulls. Like yeah, um, when 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 uh, I was fighting the dogs, so I had posted a picture of a white pit bull. Mm-hmm. That that's the pack leader, the main one. Yeah. yeah, that that was the main the main one, the one that wouldn't stop. Um, mm-hmm. He's the first one I kicked, mm-hmm. and I I Adam Vinatieri him, man. Mm-hmm. I gave him a field goal kick yeah. as hard as I could, and I was barefoot. So when we got to the hospital later, I, I, I just threw on some shoes. So I'm barefoot in my shoes or whatever. And I get to the hospital and when I get to the hospital, I take my shoes off cause I'm getting some socks and my feet are covered in blood. Wow. Um, but it most definitely was not one dog. Yeah. I, I hit that one dog and then I finally saw a gap. And when I laid on JJ, I, uh, I, the first thing I was able to get like was like his legs. So mm-hmm. I put his legs underneath me and I'm covering them. And then I grabbed one arm and I got the other arm. And then um, I, I had both arms at one point and they kept going for his face and his head. Mm-hmm. So I kind of let go of the one arm because all I had left to defend him with or try to protect him with was my face. So I started kind of doing one of these like head butting it mm-hmm. and trying to like, trying to put my face between the dog's mouth and my son's face. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when I did that, I, I, I lost one of his arms. Mm-hmm. The other dog grabbed it and I put my hand in his mouth to release it. But the whole time I was on top of him, it was like whack-a-mole, bro. Like I, I hit one from this side, another one comes from this side. Mm-hmm. Like, so for, for there to even be a notion yeah, about, that there was one dog, it's, it's insane to me. And then not only that, I mean, look at my son. Yeah. You know, that that's not one that's dog. Not that one. was literally like 30 seconds because when it, he opened the window and he screamed. He screamed so loud. He said, no. Yeah. And then he ran. And I didn't even know. I was like, mm. what? I'm like, what? And a part of me knew. Mm-hmm. But in my head, I was like, what baby did they take? Mm. That's what I said in my head. And I just put Livy on the bed. And I didn't even make it to the window because the wind just blew the curtain. And I just seen Jay's skull. Mm. And it's... I need to say it because I need people to know. Mm-hmm. I saw a dog, the white dog, p- pulling like I seen JJ like this, and the dog was pulling his face like that, and one dog had his arm 
and the other dog was like trying to get his leg or something. I I just remember seeing those two right there, and they were like yanking his face. Yeah. And I don't even like in those movies when the person like falls and they're trying to get up, but they keep. That was me in my hallway. And I'm screaming. I'm trying to grab onto the walls and I'm screaming. And I finally made it out. And that's when I see my girls running in. They took JJ. They took JJ. And I said, call the cops. I was like, remember yelling at my daughter. I'm like, call the cops now. Mm -hmm. And me, I was like, I need to go fight these dogs. Like, mm -hmm. I need to go help Jose. I ran after Jose. He was already picking up, like, like coming to me. Mm -hmm. So that's how fast that was so f for all that damage on jj mm -hmm. it was literally seconds that couldn't just be one dog yeah it's yeah. different bite marks and different spots like that it was and i seen them for myself the girls said they took jj so it's like like you said whack-a-mole and every time those dogs chased kids down the block attacked our dogs i had to fight off those dogs before off my dog along with his owners and i described it as black and mole too to the police officer yeah that really got like um unfortunately i watched his interview and uh i have it yeah i'm not gonna i won't yeah, watch like anything a, on the news um one of the things he said on there really pissed me off he he was like you know oh i'm so if you notice he never mentions jj mm -hmm. He's he's talking about his dogs. Yeah, he's saying, you know, I'm so broken up. I I, I saw that. One yeah, too. he's like, I'm so broken up. You know, they've never done anything like this, and it's like, how are you gonna say that when less than ten days ago we just called the cops for them attacking my another dog's dog. ears are ripped up. You know, and and he was there. He's he was there when they attacked our dog because I off. was he was right here to my face, and I said, mm -hmm. you put up. A DAM fence because this could have been my baby. Mm -hmm. I that was eight days before JJ got attacked. Yeah, and that right there, like burns in my soul sometimes. I'm like, I told him, like, what could oh, happen? I yeah. told him. Well, and then uh, so that time I was at work, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm on my forklift and she's calling me. And anytime she calls me late like that, like I know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so she it was it was like close to midnight, and she's calling me. I'm like, "What's wrong?" She goes, "They got Loki. They got Loki." And I'm like, you know, screaming, and, uh, scared. Um, I told her, I, she, I told her, "Well, call nine one one and take him to the vet." Mm -hmm. um, the same police officer that went that night, mm -hmm. like he he came by later after, and he was apologizing yeah. because when he went out that night, he he um he didn't he didn't take it too serious. He was mm -hmm. just like, "Oh, a dog attack!" Like, you know what I mean? I I um. He he, kind of just downplayed it. Yeah, like oh, you know, uh, well, you know, it's a dog fight. I'm a cop. I'm not really gonna. I'm you know, what, I'm not a animal, dog catcher. Yeah. I'm not animal control. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, technically, but I was calling because I was scared of those dogs. Well, because, but technically, their job is you know, if yeah. if it's after hours of animal welfare and yeah. and there's a dog that's a threat. Yeah, their dog is to neutralize that threat, or yeah. you know, you know what I mean. Whatever way it may be, whether with lethal force or or take or removing that dog yeah. from from the scenario. Yeah, some they, doom, something. Yeah, and they didn't. They went. They talked to him. They warned him, and that was it. Yeah. But after, but when Jose. Oh, so there was a. So uh, well, when Jose grabbed JJ and I was running over there to him, that's when we seen how JJ looked. Mm. Yeah, that's when everything hit us, and that's when, um, like a part of me was accepting, not accepting like I was okay with it, but like telling myself, "You need to be strong. Mm. You need you need to just be there because you need to tell your kids that they lost their brother. Pretty mm. much, like you lost your baby. Your baby's yeah. gone, yeah. and that I I was just telling myself that." Like in a weird, like it was like fast and like blurry and black and it, but when, um, crazy. When I was when I was fighting the dogs, mm -hmm. I was I was yelling. I was yelling from my gun. Yeah, I he was, was. I was telling her, "Get my gun, get my gun," you know. And uh, I, I was. I, I heard was him gonna, through the. I was in the house running yeah, over there. I was gonna. I was gonna. Yeah, rightfully gonna, so. You know, I was gonna do what I needed yeah. to do to protect my kid. And um, once I turned JJ around mm -hmm. and I saw what they did to him none of that mattered mm -hmm. i it, you know a lot of people always say like oh i would have killed those dogs this and that so i would have said that before too right 
But when it happens, in that moment, and and I had two choices at that point. Mm-hmm. I had either the choice to to kill these dogs mm-hmm. or to make sure my son lived. Yeah, and I I chose to make yeah, sure my son. Once we saw lived. JJ's face, we were all about yeah. JJ, just JJ. And while, while all this is going down, the owner and I remember you talk about he's just there. He just yeah, sat he froze. There. He's just there. He froze. So so. Not doing he, anything. He was pulling. He so did put his dogs he in put the, the, house. The, the He put the other four away, right? Mm-hmm. But the the one that I was talking about, the, the white the, one, the white one, the main one. Yeah. He was afraid of his own dog. Mm-hmm. He he was afraid of his own dog, and then um, so like, he he says, you know, on, on there that his his wife's like, oh, you know, that he saved JJ. You can't be the reason. You can't be the one that saved him when you're the, the reason, reason he got attacked, and. She says that because for a brief second mm-hmm. he was on JJ. Mm-hmm. He when I got out there he was laying on JJ. Yeah, but as soon as he saw me get there, he mm-hmm. got up and he got up, and that's when they got him. I mean, and, the, he that in that time that he got up, they went back on JJ. Well, and I, I don't understand what kind of human being. Like, okay, so all this is going on, right? Mm-hmm. My first instinct would be to try to help, right? You know, yeah, do something, something. Yeah, right? they didn't call nine one one. He didn't come. What can I do? No, nothing. He sat on his porch and he smoked a cigarette. Yeah. Watching, and I'm screaming, you killed my baby. You killed my baby. Like, I was going crazy. Like, I was, my voice was gone. I was screaming. I was screaming so hard. And he was right there. I To this day, I don't understand how he could have been that amazing, like, that calm. I'm over here losing it, and he's over here like, "Yeah, Papa, it's okay, baby, it's okay, Papa, it's and you, okay." It's and he's okay. breathing so that that. So, um, he when I first picked him up, he he's like, I, I can still hear the sounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, going happen. Yeah. Um, he was just making these really messed up sounds, yeah. and um, I could see all the damage. Like I, I'm looking at him; his face is gone, his eyes his really out of place, were, and um, yeah, and then uh. I could see like his teeth. I I knew I knew what they did to his job before we got to the hospital and stuff because the teeth were gone and crushed and, um. So he was making noise, and I uh, so I'm 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 like yes you know he's alive he's alive you know where's the ambulance type of thing, and then I, I, I he stopped making noise. Mm-hmm. When he stopped making noise, I panicked for a quick second and. Uh, I, I was like, what do I do? What do I do? Like, I'm flipping out and I look and I can see that, you know, he's he's choking on his own blood. Mm-hmm. So my mom has seizures and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the first thing that clicked was like, like what my mom does, okay, turn her, turn him on the side. Mm-hmm. So I turned him on his side and that cleared his airway. And when I turned him on his side, my hand kind of went up against the wounds on his head. Mm-hmm. And that hurt him. So he let out the mm-hmm. loudest scream ever, you know, and uh, that as... As uh, as much as that hurt, mm-hmm. it filled me with hope. Yeah, because he's screaming. You know, he's alive. He's alive, and it seemed like forever, man, till till the ambulance got there. Yeah, because when he was with JJ, there was also other like it was like the dads were coming out like across the street neighbors. Yeah, yeah the dad and the other neighbors. See, the dads were like. Where are those dogs? Like trying to do their own justice. Was, yeah, the and the moms, was hiding the dogs. He didn't the want to bring them out. Nothing. Were screaming and crying, and also, you know, trying to comfort me. But all you know, also on the phone with dispatch, and they said to get a white, like a, I mean, a, white, uh, a, a towel. Mm. So I ran in the house and I grabbed the towel. But then I saw Chloe on the phone, and she's just like, I, I forgot. I told her to call the ambulance. So I remember other people were already on the phone too. So yeah. I was like, oh my God, Chloe. And I grabbed the phone and I'm like, please come, please. And I was trying to tell him like that I'm JJ's mom. Like they attacked him. His face is gone. I was telling them what was going on. Mm. And they were just like, where are the dogs? Where are the dogs? I'm like, they were in their house. I don't care. Who cares about them? Like tell them to come. I mean, me, I mean, uh, they're typing. Like they let them know to come. They're yeah. just talking to me though, you know, but in my head, I'm like, who cares about the dogs? Just come here now. And like, mm. I'm screaming and yeah, telling was- them. And then I go back out there and I just put the towel over JJ. Before I did though, I gave him a kiss because I thought he was gone because mm-hmm. when I saw, you know, like his eyes are kind of rolling down, like out of place. And then he stopped making noise and he just looked real limp and Jose just looked so 
like gone. Like you just look like you were like you're like he looks so white. Mm -hmm. And then I just see moms cry and I was like, he killed my baby. Mm -hmm. He killed my baby. And I put the towel over and I said goodbye to JJ. I screamed and I said, I love you. I love you. And I said bye. And then I just looked at him and I yelled at him and he's just sitting there. And I was like, you killed my baby. And then that's when the police got there. Well, the, the, um, so I guess my other neighbor, um, Oh, the, yes. little, the little boys that you guys see in a lot of the videos, those are my son's like my best friends. Sons. <laughs> oh, yeah, we call our daughter's sons. But uh, his, his, their dad tried to help. Yeah, he, 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 I mean, he did. Unfortunately, he didn't have a gun. Yeah. But he went out there and uh, he had, had a, a knife, knife and he was trying to get to us, but it was five dogs. Yeah. And so he, they're, they were trying to go after him. Yeah. Um, the first ones that actually got there was the fire department. And uh, so. I will, like I said, um, you know, that scream kind of filled me with hope, mm -hmm. but that was quickly replaced Crushed. with fear yeah. when um, I handed him to the firefighter. When I handed him to the firefighter, he removes the towel and he just, he looked at JJ and he said, holy fuck. Mm. And then he, he, um, yeah. he, he got on, he got on the radio and he, he told him, he's like, ambulance, you need to step it up. Yeah. You need to get here. Yeah. And um, at, at that, when you're watching him, um, I had heard on another, um, it was an interview or something or a video you guys were doing. There was one thing that stuck with me. It was one of your daughters and she, cause she was describing it and she said that they, they were playing tug of war. Yeah. That was my, my, my five-year-old. She said, uh, she said that they, they were playing tug of the dogs were playing tug of war with my brother. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, how did, when you hear that, right? Like, cause for me, I know I'm like, I'm hurt. I'm trying to find back some tears, yeah. you know? But hearing that, um, you know, have some, being like a couple of weeks removed, does that like, how does that feel? It hurts. Yeah. Because she's scary. All our kids are really happy kids. Yeah. But Elise and Delilah, they're, uh, Elise is five, Delilah's four. They're super goofy, mm -hmm. super spunky, super no, so sweet. Per, they and, they uh, protect JJ. Yeah. And, and they, they love their, their little brother. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that really changed her. Like mm. for a while, she just got really dark, mm. like really she was gloomy. Seeing a bunch of dark stuff, too. and uh, they have night terrors and stuff. But um, but our older too. Just knowing that they saw that, and then them vocal vocalizing that, it, mm. it it's fucked up. But then our oldest, she went from AP honors. She, she was in the amazing. National Junior High Honor Society. Gosh, like, since she was in kindergarten, this kid has been on the top of her class. Yeah. And she went from, like, wearing, like, black, like, I'm telling you, guys, like, like the, how they describe it, like, in the movies, like, black, just mm. black, black. She yeah. would cover her face with her hair and just hated herself. Mm. And then when I went back in the house to get that towel, mm. and I grabbed the phone from Chloe, and I looked in the room. And my son wasn't there. He was at my sister's house. And I just seen all my daughters. And Sophia is rocking like this, back and forth, going like this. And she said, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. Yeah, they, And they, then uh, Elise is hiding in the bobby house. And she's like, GG, GG. And then Chloe, I, Chloe, she's the one that went out there. And I don't know if I should say it. She, she, uh. She was just voicing some suicidal ideology man. and stuff. She um, ran to the man and said some suicidal stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I never in a million years thought my then 11 year old yeah. would even know how to do anything like that to yourself and knowing that it would end your life. And I looked at her and I'm like, my world's falling apart over here. Mm -hmm. My daughter, oh my God, my daughter, like my baby, both my babies, my whole world is ending. Like everything I know is gone. Mm -hmm. Like they ruined my life kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. They definitely have survivor's guilt. Yeah. Like for yeah. sure. Like that's. Sophia yeah. says, I wish that was me. I wish they took my face. Well, and then one of the things that I like, I've really tried to um, reinforce with them, especially Sophia and Chloe, they're like, they regret running for help. Mm. And I tell them all the time that that was the best thing they could have done because if they would have gone trying to, Trying to even even trying to get JJ with yeah. that many dogs, yeah, we would have been in here I with two other. Kids. Yeah, I would have. It wouldn't just be JJ in the hospital, mm -hmm. you know. And imagine trying to fight off 
all those dogs trying to save three mm -hmm. kids, we would have lost one. Yeah, yeah you know? it's just crazy. So. It, when you said when you said you'd hand them over, um, you know, to the fire department, again as as a parent and as parents, did you feel like like kind of helpless at all, or hopeless in that moment, yeah. right? Yeah, there, handing yeah. it over. Or, yeah. I felt like he was gone. And yeah, you had, and you guys still had to drive. Yes. Yeah, so it's a it's about we, a we didn't they didn't allow us to go in the ambulance. He said, "You guys gotta wait five minutes." And I was said, "The they f you mean?" In. They didn't let you in. No, I no, said, "The well, f the, you mean?" That's my baby, and I ran and I tried breaking into the ambulance. But now, I mean, now, like in in hindsight, I get it now. In uh, in hindsight, it's because of the level of trauma. You know, um, they, they had to do a lot of stuff and we would have just gotten in the way, yeah. to be honest. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. The hospital is a 20, 25. The hospital he went to is about a 20, 25 minute drive from our house. Yeah. And I made that in 10. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. He went so fast. No, and then on it the whole time, <coughs> driving over there, we, we have his blood on us. Yeah. And we're, I'm screaming and I'm hitting the dashboard yeah. and i'm saying all these messed up cuss words yeah. and everything and i'm looking at him i'm like he took our baby he took our baby and then to us we didn't think he was gonna be alive we mm -hmm. were preparing ourselves to go say bye to our son we thought that we were gonna get there and they were just gonna tell us you know we're sorry we did everything we could and then when we got there and even him being in surgery, I thought they were just putting his face together so we can say well, bye to him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't, nothing in me thought he was going to survive. Not because I didn't want him to or anything, but because that's how, that's the level of the trauma it was. was. The, yeah. the severity of his injuries were. One of the one of the moments I remember the clearest, so they took him to the to the adult bay because they didn't of, even bother taking him to the because, children's side yeah because yeah. of the like level. i said it was a level one trauma yeah. um i so on the scene you know we had heard the, the law enforcement other people say that he had died mm -hmm. and yeah. then uh, we get there and it's quiet so i don't hear nothing mm -hmm. i'm thinking he's dead and mm -hmm. um and we're sitting right out of the, like it's curtains like it's not a, like you think like it's like that you walk in mm -hmm. and the bed's right there the everything's there to do surgery and there's just a curtain to close because it's you know that you have to get there right away for something well, that traumatic and so they're, just right they're, there. yeah they're, we're sitting there waiting and then they're they're in there working on them and uh i always compare it to like like the, it reminded me of the when when he was born mm -hmm. so like and like I told you, I, I delivered JJ. Yeah. And um, when he first came out, he he let out a scream, right? Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there in the ER room, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to tell me that my son's dead. And instead, it's like the most beautiful sound ever. I hear him scream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know, he's making it. And so then, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. then they like, you know, it's crazy because it reminded me of bringing him into the world, mm -hmm. and you know, and he was almost taken. You yeah. Know? And. Uh, then the nurse comes out and she's just like, we don't know if he's going to make it, right. but right now he's fighting. Mm -hmm. He, um, we've, um, they try to put a tube down his throat and, <laughs> and he, he started screaming and, and he pulled it out. That little, yeah, <laughs> you know, that like, little crazy he, uh, kid, man. For, for those, you know, fighter. for the people that do know us in, in real life, you know, JJ, he's, he's, they he's know. a little firecracker, <laughs> yeah. you know, and he, he knew, you know, they try to put that tube down there. He was yeah. like, that don't go there. And yeah. he tried to pull it out. <laughs> they, but, they had to medicate him or like put him to sleep because of how much he was fighting. And I wish we'd known that immediately. So we had some hope, but, mm -hmm. and then they took us to a room and they were like, for privacy. And I stopped him right there. I go, don't, don't mess with me. Tell me yeah. right now. My son's gone. Like, just tell me, yeah. don't take me to a room. Mm -hmm. Just tell me right here, right now. So I can go say bye to my son. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we just need to go to a room. And now I know it was for law enforcement and all these things. And mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like they were just trying to like distract us, mm -hmm. like take our mind off it. But from that very moment, there was chaplains waiting for us. Like wow. they were just right there waiting because they told them this, this family's going to need some help, yeah. you know, and from the, like literally now 
They're still around. The chaplains are yeah. still there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Ben. <laughs> ben, Uncle Ben. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like describing that, you know what I mean? The injuries and everything is, is you know, I, I, I could see, and I guess maybe this is hindsight, you know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. you could see, you know, maybe the, some of the decisions that they made and everything. Yeah. Uh, but, but speaking about the injuries though, what were the initial injuries and like, where is he at in his progress right now? Cause I know we're a couple of you know, yeah. weeks removed. Yeah. Uh, so he was, he was scalped on the back of his head, a uh, pretty large area. Um, he, well, his face was ripped off, you know, so obviously all the flesh wounds and stuff like that, but he, um, he suffered severe and various fractures on all four of, of the orbital walls of his eye, as well as the yeah. orbital floor. Uh, his nose was basically gone. His cheekbones were decimated as well as his, his mandibles were destroyed. Um, they took his teeth. They took his teeth. They, it, it, a lot of high well, level one trauma injuries mm -hmm. um and luckily by some miracle they missed everything vital literally um, like arteries yeah wow, yeah i didn't even think about that they yeah didn't they didn't take they, an eyeball you know, they didn't he, uh, take he also ears nothing he all no well his ear was off well, it was off yeah. but i mean everything was there to put back together pretty much yeah, yeah he also he also suffered uh bites to his arm his leg and his groin mm -hmm. um luckily they missed everything there too because yeah. i want grandkids no but right. not only that but there's an artery right there yeah too. yeah one of the main ones and yeah. they and, uh, missed that well it was crazy because you know like which is amazing eventually yeah we might put you know i'll probably put the the um I the picture of should. of his initial injuries like on twitter or something where it won't be censored yeah but um so. if you were to have so. yeah, uh, if, right? you were, if you were to have seen that I think it'll impact more, I, like, to well, do something. I thought, and she thought, too, you know, he's not going to have a face. Yeah. And then they come out probably, like, six hours into the surgery, and they're like, 95% of the tissue is still there. We were mm -hmm. able to put it back together. Wow. They were all surprised. Yeah. Actually. You can see, though, clearly, like, um, by his ear, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. an incision, and then... uh on the throat, I, I on that picture that I just posted, mm -hmm. you'll see it's two perfect lines. Yeah. It's like a ninety degree angle. Those were were made by them wow. to have more room to like stretch it to stitch it. Yeah. That's what and yeah and then his cheek is tethered in to where his jaw is so that they can they didn't have enough room to just do it like normally. Mm -hmm. They had to put it like this mm -hmm. and keep it in like that so that it can grow. Yeah, because they had to put a skin graft there because there was no essentially, skin right yeah, essentially there. it was just a hole. And, and then we said with the they took a portion of his mm -hmm. rib. Yeah, so they took uh, they they took a rib graft. They they harvested two pieces of, of two of his ribs, uh -huh. and those pieces were used to mend the fractures in the orbital walls. Uh, reconstruct his nose, his cheekbone, and give him a new jaw. Well, literally, his nose, it was just skin. And uh, I even, like, from seeing his injuries, I told myself, I was like, okay, they said he's alive. All right, yes, okay, but he's going to come out looking different. Who cares? My baby's alive. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to need, you know, to breathe through a machine for the, for the rest of his life, but I don't care. And I thought he was just going to have, like, just skin, and like no eye, mm -hmm. because I remember seeing his eyeball like down here. Mm -hmm. So I thought his eye wasn't going to make it. I thought they ruined it or something and they weren't able to save it. And then I, his nose, I remember seeing his nose gone. So I was like, it's just probably going to be nothing right here. Just like a scar tissue and then two holes right there for his nose. And I was happy with that. Mm. When they took us to the ICU into his room. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was like, I was so nervous. I remember my mom trying to like build us up, like give us courage. Like he's going to be fine. You guys, yes, like, we could see you. him. Like you guys get to see him. Like you have your baby to see, like it's going to, you know, she was also going crazy too. But mm -hmm. when I walked in, Jose immediately just gravitated towards him, but mm -hmm. me and I, I felt guilty, but it was just my reaction. I like wailed out a huge scream and I, I ran out of the room. Because I seen a little tiny body mm -hmm. and he's on a ventilator. So you see his chest being forcefully like this mm -hmm. and then just 
blood. Yeah. And he's bald and just it. Yeah. It's like my baby. So because, you know, so. because of the attack, um, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, he, there's going to be a new normal for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's not normal, but right. um, he lost four of his adult teeth, so he'll never get some of his adult teeth. Mm. Um, he was scalped so severely that he won't grow hair. Mm. Um, and it's going to be a couple years before getting him like hair plugs or hair implants or anything mm. like that is even a possibility. Right. And for that to even be a possibility, there's other procedures that need to happen for that to even be a yeah. reality, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So it like, it's, it's a process. So it's yeah. Expensive. Things like, things it's, like that is just like, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be like three or four different, like you said, a process, like yeah. three or four different surgeries before it's even a reality where it, it's a possibility. Yeah. It, it's a lot of surgeries. He's gonna it's have. yeah. It's fucked up. Well, it's a good, he literally, you know, the nickname that you guys have for him. The oh yeah. And baby, yeah. yeah. He literally, <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm again, I'm so thankful for you guys and I'm fortunate that, um, I, I was able to see him, you know, I was able to meet him yeah. and, when you see him in person and this, I'm just for the people to, you know, yeah. seeing things online is only one portion of it. Yeah. Um, it, when you see him in, in, in person, it's like you, I just, I just was happy. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. I just, yeah. sm I smiled right away. Yeah, you know? he, I was he, happy. Like I said, you know, he looks yeah. a lot better in person than yeah. in, in the pictures. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but yeah. like, and when you see him in person, I mean, obviously you see the scars and the injuries, mm -hmm. but you're like, Whoa, yeah. he still looks like him, you yeah. know. Like he's still so cute. He really is so cute. Yeah, and the, and the yeah, the indestructible baby man. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes I feel like I jinxed him with that, <laughs> but like I had I had started calling on that just because like the kid's fearless, right? Like he he was yeah. like an adrenaline junkie type of thing. He yeah. would uh he jump from one couch to the other or like well, or no, like oh, I mean, we go to like, the park. Remember we go to the park and he he want to slide down head first and yes, everything. The first time he ever went down a slide was head first oh, on his bonsai. We're like, jumped. what the heck? We're like, JJ. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good, like I said, it's 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 a good process of, of seeing everything. And then, like I said, me following the story and seeing it, um, seeing him here, it's like, it's a, good, it's a good full circle moment for myself. And actually, it's going to go into what I was going to ask next, which was what went into your guys' thought process and like, wanting to document this and like start the page you know what i'm saying yeah what, so what was like going um, on with that i still remember the day it happened so we had a family tiktok mm -hmm. already that we were kind of neglecting but it was just there mm -hmm. and uh we had kind of we had interest in vlogging already mm -hmm. um you know uh, but before the interest was like like uh documenting what it what it's like to have such a large family mm -hmm. and uh, how we do certain things because um a lot of people don't know, you know, it, it's it, a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It takes a lot. A lot goes into it. Yeah. But I remember uh, I was sitting in the in the ICU. Um, on the recliner. Oh, on the recliner. I remember that. And uh, I was looking up dog bite statistics. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, like I said, you know, I've said I said it before, you know, that's probably the worst thing I, I ever did. Because mm. um, dog bite statistics and they basically for what happened to JJ and for somebody his age, mm -hmm. He's a miracle. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, yeah. he shouldn't, he, sh by, by all means, he should be dead. Mm. And um, so I started looking at statistics and I started, you know, looking at more numbers and the number of attacks and the frequency of these attacks and everything. Yeah. yeah. And the trouble that we have had with the, the neighbor and their dogs already mm. and reaching out to the agencies that we were supposed to reach out to mm. and nothing being done or them being them kind of just telling us like hey our hands are tied like we did the process everything we could. of it should have been way more so, on it like more yeah. strict and, it and um i i remember reading the one one of the ones i read was like and you know it's not to like attack pit bull owners or anything but just to kind of put things into perspective uh somebody is attacked by a pit bull two two people are attacked by a pit bull every day in the united states yeah and that's just pit bulls yeah that's not dog attacks dog attacks in general mm -hmm. so a breed, a breed specific statistic like that. Mm -hmm. Just imagine with everything included. Oh yeah. And uh, one of the things that really that that kind of in, got me looking these things up was when we were in the ICU and I was talking to one of the doctors, and he was like, "Oh yeah, this is our thirtieth bite case." 
this yeah, year. JG was the 30th that so, year. And it was February J- 20th. Yeah. Wow. JG got attacked February 20th, and they already had 30 bite cases just in the Oklahoma City area alone. That's like one a day. I saw that there was um, uh, a couple weeks after the attack. I even saw in the news that... Um, the there- South Carolina woman? No, this was in here. In, in, I want to say in Spencer too. That there was a. Did you guys hear about it? There was an old man that got attacked. By oh a yeah, wild, that that happened. Like a, I think it was like a, like a week after JJ or something yeah. like that. Yeah. No. And then uh, just recently there was um, there was a lady that that they found her dead in her mm-hmm. front yard, and they were investigating it as a homicide. Wow. But once yeah. once they looked at it, they realized so she got a, killed by a pack of a dogs. A pack of wow. dogs. So, the, what kind of um, what kind of inspired the page mm-hmm. was obviously to document his journey because he made it and he mm-hmm. was alive but we wanted to raise awareness and hopefully hopefully you know uh something results in change yeah. because something needs to change if people were more afraid mm-hmm. of the consequences yeah then they would control their dogs mm. they Just they like would they would be more responsible right you know but because you never hear about dog owners going to jail or anything yeah. because of what they do. People don't take it seriously. Yeah. And nobody should have to be told what we were told. You know, we were told if Jay or while well, the sheriff was saying, we're waiting for JJ to die right now so mm-hmm. we can take him to jail. Yeah. It's pretty much like what? Nobody saying. should have to hear that. Right. I mean, my, what happened to JJ was enough. That guy should be in jail already. Like, yeah, pretty yeah. much saying you the know? only way he can go to jail is if your son died. Yeah. Wow. It's like, but what about so, the negligence? What about right. not following the city rules? Like when you own a dog. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean? like it, the page basically started by, um, like I said, trying to raise awareness because the, the frequency. I was I was blown away, dude. And right. I was just like, this is crazy. Yeah. Because I'm a dog lover too. Right. You know, I love dogs. I yes. yeah. <laughs> a lot. I, I, yeah. I I really love dogs. Yeah. So this was kind of, and I've always been a pretty good dog owner. You know, mm-hmm. I mean. Um, I had a I had Belgian Malinois for, for for a while. He just passed away when we got here, but he would get out and stuff. And I got in dog at large ticket stuff mm-hmm. because he's an active breed. But I've always been a pretty responsible dog owner. We had to make a really hard choice a few years back when we moved here because our Dutch Shepherd mm-hmm. uh, was really aggressive. Mm-hmm. She wasn't safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Towards like little dogs, little cats. Mm-hmm. And, well, yeah, and I dogs. couldn't. I couldn't uh, in good faith, you know, or, or just like. I couldn't have that on me, you know, trying to just put her up for adoption or right. something and then something happening. She, yeah. she it was just too much. Work? We had her we had yeah, her put down. We the, did the responsible yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, and that was our family dog. She yeah. and she she never attacked none of the kids, nothing. Mm-hmm. Like But we had to move and we couldn't take her, so we knew we either give her to a shelter and they try to adopt like get her adopted and she hurts someone's, you know, cat or dog right. that they already had, or we need to just put her down. And we yeah, totally so, told them to so do the observation. Yeah, it started that. with trying to, you know, raise awareness and change. And then um, the second part of it was just documenting this miracle. Yeah. And also the amount, like, of love we got. I mean, when I posted about JJ when it happened, mm-hmm. it was, I don't know, like, it was more me just trying to, like, tell my friends and family on my Facebook, like, guys, please help me pray for my son. Mm-hmm. And we've always been transparent on our social media so that it was just like you know just asking for help to pray yeah and then it turned to like a lot of shares and yeah. a lot of people like messaging oh my god it's okay so then we start to realize like this is something everybody gonna... wants yeah. to know about jj yeah let's well, tell them how he's doing a big part of it too was a lot of our friends on Facebook and everything. Mm-hmm. I, I like you guys know I, I'm certified meme king. <laughs> you know, I would post. I would post a lot. Yeah. So um, they started remembering. They're like, "Hey, didn't you just post about your dog being attacked?" And they started mm-hmm. digging up all my posts. Yeah. Where I was talking about these issues, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I called Adam a wife for today," or "Oh, I called nine one one today." Like those things. Because we're really I transparent. We, yeah. We're yeah. like vlogging, but through and our posts, everything. and we're always documenting right. things. And uh, I think that that really got people pissed. Mm. You know, they they had seen like, hey, he's been trying to get help. They've been trying to do something, and then this happened. Yeah, and it, yeah, it kind of just took off. So I guess yeah, us putting it out and making a page for Jay yeah. was more just to people that have donated and people that keep, you know, up with JJ and giving us, you know, 
support mm-hmm. i feel like the least we can do yeah after everything they've done is share jj with them too yeah well i mean i think it like it, it was i think you guys were smart by doing that and and um it's also like you said it's not just documenting like what happened or anything but it's the people and us myself included we're we're gen- genuinely interested Invested in jj yeah, now. yeah. like yeah. we 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 see the daily posts and everything and we get happy. Yeah, we, a lot of people say that. Yeah, That's like, cool. we, we look and we come, like, if I come home from work, I'm like, did, did, you, show, did you see? I was like, yeah, I saw yeah. it too. Did you see that? You know what I mean? We're going to go live later. Let's get on, let's, yeah. let's get on you know? So it, it is, it is a I good thing. I did see her name pop up one time. Yeah. I was like, oh, I remember. Yeah. It, it's, it, it is, it's a good thing that, um, that you guys did that. You know what I mean? And, and it takes, it's all, it's also, you know, courage. It, it, not a lot of people, because yeah. in a time like that, a lot of people understandably understand if you want privacy. Yeah. If you just don't want to be away from all that, everybody yeah. would be like, we well, get it, it, you know? But it, you know what, really, though? We, we, we did go into it knowing we're going to get some hate. It. We're going to get yeah, some hate. We're going to so, get people so, saying some dumb stuff or believing the other side mm-hmm. and trying to, like, get us, you know, yeah. marked as bad parents. So, so what, what, what ended up happening, though, was, it, I mean, it's it's been a blessing in so many ways, but... Right. In the beginning, obviously, like um, with the media, we were at first. Mm-hmm. They were trying to get the story and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um, when we declined the interviews, mm-hmm. it turned into attacks. Yeah. So that quickly turned into like random people, like yeah. messaging and commenting and stuff like that. And then um, we didn't really realize it, but being so transparent. Mm-hmm. We, helped us so much because mm-hmm. it showed you know to everybody like this you know they're calling them uh neglectful parents yeah. and stuff like that and we've always been open we always so people were just like nah, that's yeah. not the case like, like you know well that's why i i wanted to make it a thing to you know come over here and, and talk to you guys and, and give you guys this spot to, to your chance because you you're getting a lot of hate in which i have to you know hold yeah. my back myself back yeah. a lot of times too it's so annoying but yeah. um there was another reason why well one of the main things where i was like i, I want to give them their chance to talk without no bias yeah. and no nothing um I, I was listening i watched one of the news uh clips right and i remember i was showing my my grandpa who just passed yeah. away rest in peace grandpa and um uh i was showing him this little clip and uh not to you know name, identify them with that but there yeah. was there was a sheriff that was just saying oh that, yeah yeah that was Saying like, oh, yeah. this could have been avoided, so, uh, and, and this and this. And that's that. a newly elected sheriff too. Mm. Um, I don't even think he really knew anything about the. Uh, case. I actually got a call from the investigator after, mm-hmm. and then um, we had a conversation about that. Yeah, because at, at that point we hadn't given a formal statement. Yeah, so I was like, "Why are you giving an update when but you have actually when not? You haven't all the even got a formal statement from me or the mm-hmm. witnesses that were there or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and um, the really twisted thing is. Once the DA decision came out mm-hmm. that there was not going to be no neglect charges, yeah, that there was no, yeah, that there was no notion of neglect or anything like that. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the media dropped the story. Yeah, no, that's all all of a sudden. now yeah. they don't want to cover it because it's not yeah. juicy. They want to, and they're only going to put out that they want mm-hmm. views. They want well, to get the ratings. Like they, they, they use us for their self. And I heard them say thing. something too that really like. So on one of them, they're like, oh, you know, we asked we asked the sheriff about the investigation and they said their investigation has not changed. Mm. And the thing with that is I know for a fact that there was at least five different witness statements yep. that, that were submitted mm-hmm. after that mm. press conference. So why are you telling the public that? Has nothing changed has changed when there's, when there's been, been, been when there's been more statements added to the case yeah you know but i mean the good thing is that's behind us now yeah um they on in the end though they ended up making the right decision and you know yeah like and, well like and like we said you know in the in in uh in that facebook post you know um it was torture waiting for it yeah. But we knew that they would make the right, the, well, that the district attorney would make the right decision. Mm-hmm. They'd see, see through all the, the falsehoods and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, in the end, they did. Yeah. You know, and that, and honestly, that hurt us a lot. I mean, not just like because of what they were saying, but I mean, right. as far as um, trying to gain support and trying to gain, uh, trying to start fundraisers for JJ. Yeah. The beginning yeah. was really rough. Yeah. Um, People were just going really at you guys. Yeah. Really and, and on top of that, like. Messages um, were really mean. Yeah. And it's like. 
I'm literally sitting in the ICU yeah. crying, holding my son's hand that feels so cold and he's on a paralytic and you're telling me this right now? Yeah. Well, like, and uh, um, yeah. the GoFundMe actually got flagged. I saw that, yeah. Because and the page, the page too, right? The page that we're trying yeah. to take down the page. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. the GoFundMe got flagged because people were uh, refunding their donations. They're taking back their money. I and, mean, uh, <sighs> yeah, I mean, it is what it is. We're past that now, but it, a lot of that misinformation and and those attacks caused a lot of problems for yeah, us. Yeah, it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna give out updates or news, mm -hmm. it's important because it's people's lives. Like you can't. Just do it. Yeah, there's real people for behind your the story, own right? self you know? gain. You need to be real. You for know what sure, I'm saying? for sure. And and like I said, this, this is why we're having these talks. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it's because of stuff like that. But I I am curious though. Speaking about dogs and everything, I saw that um, on Easter that you know what I mean that they, they, he passed by the little dog. Oh yeah, and, yeah. You know, JJ was able to touch him, and, and and it was like a like I don't know who was riding it, but you're like it's a big moment. You know? Yeah, yeah. But I am curious now going forward. Do you think like are you, are you gonna have a different view on pit bulls now? Like, are you gonna have resentment towards them? Like, or is it tough? I, I mean, me, I'm I don't know. People can think what they want, but it's just me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be, I'm not going to hate them, but I'd rather keep my distance because I'm scared yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. I'm just scared of the potential. And just like, I'm scared to hold a gun yeah. and I would need a gun. If someone was trying to come after me, I yeah. would grab it, but I'm just, I don't want to hold it or go play with it or like, mm -hmm. you know, go out shooting at the shooting range. I'm just scared. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm scared of pit bulls and especially seeing what they did to my kid. Yeah. I'm scared of them. Yeah, I mean me, I, like I said, I love dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a pit bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had a, we had a family pit bull for years. Yeah. Did. Um, do I care for them? No. No. I, I mean, wouldn't have another. Like one. I, 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 I moved away from them for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, for one, in California, when we were still living there, you can't rent any anywhere mm -hmm. if you own a pit bull. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that was that was the first kind of thing. But then on top of that, like, people can say what they want. But there's actual science behind some of these claims and these mm -hmm. theories, and the science doesn't lie, and neither yeah. do the numbers. Yeah, you know. And I own well, we 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 own some uh, breeds that could be considered aggressive, like mm -hmm. we own Dutch Shepherds. Yeah, they're not aggressive, but some some people um, consider them an aggressive type dog because they're yeah. used for for uh, personal protection, law mm -hmm. enforcement, and stuff and like that. And that's why but, I feel like we need to do that JJ law. Yeah, because I could. I think if we did something where it's these aggressive type dogs, if something like with like guns, like there's regulations and there's certain protocols. She, like, she wants to make it to like, uh, or try to try to, uh, so there's more precautions when, with, uh, these with, with these, with certain breeds mm -hmm. that, so if somebody wants to own them, then maybe they have to take a training yeah. class. Yeah, or something. Or at least you know. there's a, a limit to how much in the mandatory fence. Yeah, five. I, I said that five pit bulls. Five pit bulls. Why? Why? Well, and to me, so it's like they had a they had another pit bull. Bef well, they have they've always had five, but they had another one that died. Mm -hmm. Right? They had to put her down. Mm -hmm. The next day, he yeah. brought he another went one. and brought another one. Wow. They after JJ got a tattoo, mm -hmm. they had another they dog. Had another oh, dog. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. It's magically gone now, I think, because I call it animal control. But <laughs> you get another one after that. And, and, and like I said, I, I'm on the same boat as you. Like I, I don't have any. You know, like I we, we Mexican family, we yeah. have pitbulls. You know, yeah, I, yeah I it's three. all the time. Yeah, yeah. We, we had three. Um, my friends have pitbulls. We're all nice when with everything. Um, but five five pitbulls is a bit. And yeah. they're all indoor. They don't get exercise. No I mean, fence. No, no nothing. Well, I see. And when we moved in. Um, when we, when we moved into the house that where it happened, yeah, we had, um, so we had two dogs. I had Jane, my, my Dutch Shepherd, she was two and Loki, mm -hmm. he was like maybe four Six or five months. months. Oh, yeah. God. Um, the first thing that my neighbor said mm -hmm. when we moved into this house, so typically, you know, you move into a neighborhood, people are like, Hey neighbor, Friendly, you know, this dude walks over and he's like, are those your dogs? I was like, yeah. And he's like. Oh, we're going to have a problem. Oh. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I own five pits. Yeah. And I was like, 
Okay, well, you saw keep them on your I yard. Like, I keep them on your yard. I keep my dogs in mine. Yeah. So one of the first things I did because the house that we moved into didn't have a fence mm-hmm. was I put up a fence. Yeah. Because I just, have dogs. Yeah, right. that's just <laughs> you know? your responsibility. Right. That's why I'm like this JJ Law. I think, I feel like it's going to be really hard though because people are going to fight. Like, you can't tell me how much dog they're going to have. But I don't know. I just feel like there's way too many attacks. Yeah. Just, in just the time that we've been in here, so much people have reached out and we're like, they're just like, my grandma just got attacked by Dude, the number, the number of people. Um, I've been, been attacked, attacked or, and it's not just people. It's like Rottweilers, there was, there was German one, Shepherds. Yeah, there was one lady the aggressive that aggressive list. It's always yeah. those dogs. There was one lady that reached out, and uh, her aunt was killed, decapitated, by dogs. and um, they actually had the dogs actually had pieces of her body mm. in their stomach mm. when they were put down. You know, we um, it's speaking about that too. The, you like you said, the facts are there. When I was uh, when I was stationed in Georgia at Fort Benning, I I stayed on base, and even on base, they had a list of dogs. This is a military base. Yeah. They had a list of dogs that weren't allowed on base. Yeah. There, this the aggressiveness for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not just that. I mean, even the military uses dogs because they. They, they, you know, like not like well, the and, weapon, but like their protection. Yeah. So I mean, why don't we look at these certain dogs as weapons too? Well, Just like, like, well, the thing is too, like, so everybody knows certain breeds are more aggressive than others. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, because, like I said earlier, because there's no consequences for for owners and their irresponsibility, mm-hmm. people kind of just grab them. But if um, if there was something like that. Then, then they would. You would think twice. You know, yeah. like oh, before I got it. Before I got a Dutch Shepherd, mm-hmm. I did research. Yeah. I I researched really the did. breed. Yeah. You know, he has books. like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not even an exaggeration. Yeah. Like especially because I have kids. Yeah. You know, so I wanted a breed that was gonna be right for me and be right for my family and be protective of my family, mm-hmm. but on command. Mm-hmm. You know, because if if you're not a respons- a responsible dog owner, then I don't care how much you love that dog. Yeah. It can be a threat. Yeah. At, at any given time, it can be a threat. And uh, one of the things that, that some people have tried to say is like, oh, well, what did your son do to that dog? Mm. The, the attack was completely unprovoked. Yeah. When they said when they said that he he walked to the yeah. door. That he wandered onto his yard and, and banged knocked. on his door yeah. so, and I he mean, got scared. You sh- Use your head. was I mean, not in his yard. Yeah, JJ is a one-year, well, he was a one-year-old baby boy yeah playing outside with his sisters mm-hmm. is it does it even make sense that he would be able to walk away from them and bang on a door loud yeah. enough to scare somebody like come on you talking about man a- at two in the afternoon so scared to where he lets all his five dogs just out i mean first of all JJ wasn't even in his backyard mm-hmm. he was still right there on the front yard playing with the girls the girls were just like they came running like mm-hmm. they took the like the dogs came and took him and I mean if JJ really did go over there how much noise can a little baby possibly make to yeah. scare a grown scare man and, a pit and it was his but he said the door he supposedly banged on was his garage door. He's yeah. in his house. Yeah, so that that it was another thing that no really because our houses yeah. our houses JJ are almost identical, there. right? Yeah. Like our houses are almost identical. Mm-hmm. So he's saying you know that that he was banging on the garage door and this and that. Not only is the distance an issue, but the you know and then the fact that he's out there with his sisters and then you see where the toys are at. Mm-hmm. You see all these different these things saying otherwise. Mm-hmm. The layout of the houses. If somebody was knocking on my back garage door, I wouldn't be able to hear them. I wouldn't be able to hear that. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't. Let and then know, if let dogs are barking knocking. and stuff like that, why don't you go look out the window, First. supposedly? Yeah. In the, you're, honestly, if you have five dogs and you're in your house and you just hear them going crazy, are you just going to go, oh, my God, open the door, run, guys? No, mm-hmm. you're going to be like, what's going what? Yeah. And like, go look to for you to know what's about to approach you. Yeah. You don't just go on that your dog's out not knowing what's out there. Yeah. Aren't you afraid of what's going to be yeah. out there for your dogs to get hurt? Anyway, I'm just like... None of it makes sense. That's that, no. that, that's a crock of, you know what? He's just trying to save his dog, save himself, because he knew at that moment when he saw my son, mm-hmm. 
I'm losing my dogs and I might go to jail because of my negligence, not because a little baby wandered onto his yard supposedly and scared him. JJ was in our front yard and got taken away. So how, and they took away more than just that, like a lot. So how, how do you how do you go back to that person? Like it's have you, do you, every single time I go you know, home, it's hard. Is yeah, I, it is so hard. Each step gets harder each time I go home. I still remember the first time I I went back home. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Same. So like uh, we live off kind of like a main road, not mm -hmm. like a main road, but it's it's a pretty big road and. Uh, it's a little turn off into a little neighborhood. As soon as I hit that turn, bro, I broke. Mm. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Same I when I did the same it. thing when I went home too. Uh, mm -hmm. And he had already went home before that. Yeah. He was like, Are you sure you can You do have this? to see that every single time and you have yeah. to see this neighbor. No, yeah. and then not just that, but it was snowing right now. Like I told you, it was cold. Mm -hmm. Well, when the snow melted, that white towel was outside. No. And it was burgundy so, red because mm. of his blood. And then his shirt, they had to cut open was on the floor and it's just like well they're oh talking about the as far as investigation wise mm -hmm. everything was still on our yard his pacifier he, uh the pants that they ripped off of him mm -hmm. and yeah his chupi that he always has in his mouth was on our front yard everything was in our front yard mm -hmm. yet he's saying that the that my son was in his backyard yeah that like would have been month, in his a backyard month later, yeah. A month later, I find my son's because we're. I mean, uh, we're keep in home. mind we're not home. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So and the snow is kind of like this. It's it's snowed since the attack and stuff, and uh, my son's pants and everything are still on our front yard. Yeah. How good of did, did they even put any effort yeah. into investigating? Yeah, anything? I mean, like, I don't know. Or maybe just in the movies, but don't they take that type of stuff? Like maybe yeah, there would have been bite mark it, marks right? yeah. or and, something and on the pants. Or I don't know. To me, it was just like, why didn't you guys take anything like that? Like, I don't know. To me, it was just kind of like, did they even try? I feel like they didn't take it serious. I yeah. I mean, there's there's so much stuff to it, and I I wanted to ask to actually speaking about this, and and you talk about the, these laws and these changes. You think it, it might be a tough question? I don't even know if you can answer or not, but. Do you think there's any way to find like a silver lining out through this and maybe like bring, like I said, shed some light in, into this thing that's like. Yeah, well, I think JJ is the silver lining. Mm. You know, he he's the little dude's an inspiration. <laughs> yeah. mean, you know, like yeah. look at everything he's been through and then think about all the things that we complain about on a daily basis. Right. Like, you know, no, yeah, you know what? Or every, I, everything that you think that you can't do. Yeah. Or like, like you think it's overwhelming or anything. And look at what he's been through. Look he at what he's going through. He literally can't even smile all the way because yeah. it hurts. Yeah. But he still smiles. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. He when he takes a bath, we have to wash that, and that stings and it hurts him. But he's still playing with his little caritos mm -hmm. in the tub, or when after his bath, it's still raw. But he goes and he cuddles and lays on me, mm -hmm. knowing it's gonna hurt. Like he does all these things, and it's like, wow. But I'm over here trying to take an excedrin because I got a migraine. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even like, no, shut up. Don't even like, who cares about your stupid yeah. little headache? You know, I don't know. To me, it's just like, he made it. He survived. He made it through the two biggest, like 16 hour surgeries. Yeah. They did have to give him, um, like, what was it? Two, two blood transfusions. Yeah. He, said he had two, two different blood transfusions. When it first happened, uh, that was that one was like a 12 hour surgery and then we had a longer one the 16 after hour one home. yeah after mm -hmm. he healed and stuff a little bit and they yeah. had to go back in but yeah it's just like he went through so much i i don't know that's just that that's the light yeah the progress he's made that he survived he's still here and well, he's happy and, like and this the, freaking kid yeah. is so happy and like what well, the heck <laughs> his uh his situation has has for me it's it's uh really shown me that there's there's more good people in the world than there, there really is bad. Is. Like for yeah. all the hate we get, yeah, we don't even have to like. Sometimes I'm like, send, I'm, but so for legal reasons and other, we can't reply. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? People are replying mm -hmm. in favor of JJ, and it's yeah. like, Ooh. dang, like you yeah. don't see that a lot. Like when you go through comments on other stuff and you yeah. see people being mean, you see likes or people like, yeah, this net or yeah, you're like, you're like, no, mm -hmm. no, you know, like yeah. that felt good, like. 
Okay. I'm More, feeling now I feel heard. And in know? the beginning, in the beginning, it was like almost all negativity. Oh, right. Yes, and then yeah. now I remember. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like for every, <laughs> it's not even an exaggeration, but it sounds crazy for like every 10,000 positive comments, mm -hmm. we get one negative. Yeah. And it's like for people to take time out of their day to click that reply button mm -hmm. and back us up or to go and love a picture or sometimes we'll get a new follower and I'll notice they go through every single picture and mm -hmm. love it. And I'm like, they took time out of their own day to show my baby love. Mm -hmm. I have to keep posting for them. Yeah. Like they really do love JJ. Like they yeah. deserve to see him just like we deserve to see him. Well, I'm, I'm, um, I'm happy that you, that you are able to answer <laughs> that. Cause I, I, the reason why I asked that is because I thought about that question. Yeah. Right. But obviously, you know, you guys were the parents and then went, yeah, that went through everything. I was like, I was stumbling myself. I was like, I don't know if I could find one. Yeah. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, cause you know, you know, some people say, you know, like everything happens for a reason yeah. or, or be the, you could find a good in anything. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't, me personally, Figure yeah, something I couldn't. Oh, no, I trust couldn't. me. There's, there's days where I'm like that too, yeah. where I, where I just, I, there was, and there was a long period where I couldn't, Yeah, you know, um, but look at everything that's happened or look at all the progress he's made. And then people on a daily basis tell us how he inspires them. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning I was, I was. I was really bitter. I mean, yeah. JJ, JJ is my twin. Yeah. You know, and as, as a man, as a, you know, your, our sons are our legacy. Yeah. And I got five girls, yeah. you know. And the and first I, boy looks like me. Yeah. I got, yeah, I got, I got, I got five girls and my oldest yeah. is, is her twin. Yeah. So, um, and, and then finally, you know, JJ comes and, and he's. And his name is literally Jose. Yeah. yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love all my kids equally, but, um, he was the one that looked like me the most. Yeah. And, and you brought him. Yeah. And, and I delivered him. I brought yeah. him into this world, you yeah. know? Um, so I was real bitter about that for a while, but then, you know, like I, after reassessing and, and looking at everything he's been through, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't help but to just be grateful that he's alive. Yeah. yeah and yeah. people do tell us that, um, I, this lady reached out and she did tell me that she fostered, um, she was, like an in-home thing for dogs and she was fostering a pit bull mm -hmm. and it was in her house. She has kids. Her husband was home. Mm -hmm. It just somehow like snapped. I don't know. She, she, it, the dog just snapped, turned on them and it was going for the baby, like the littlest thing, you know, and she was able to throw her, like she said, she threw her baby and then she tried to close the door, but she went in between the mm -hmm. baby and the door, like in the, the dog, mm -hmm. the dog got her. And she told me that it lasted about like, like almost 10 minutes before her husband heard her yelling for help and he was outside or something. And she said, all I could think about was JJ. Mm. She said, literally, as it was happening to me, the pain, the sound of the dog, the crunching in my leg, I just thought of JJ. What yeah. was he hearing? If I'm hearing this, mm -hmm. if I'm scared, these like... She said, like, I felt so much fear and I was so scared, but I was just thinking of how did he feel? Like mm -hmm. for someone to be thinking of my son during yeah. something that is scary and traumatic for them to go through, I was like, wow, I'm glad that we are doing this because mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of people that reach out because they're either going through it or knew someone that they don't have no more because of something like this or, be, or they're healing or have a kid that's healing. And it's just like... This is so common. This yeah. is very common. Yeah. And all of them didn't get no justice. Mm. None of them did. Yeah. Some of them still see that dog or the owners have a new dog or it was just like reset. Okay. The dog's gone. Well, I could just go get another one and redo kind of thing. And it's like scary. That's scary. Well, it's, it's cool that, you know, that, that is, that stuff does happen. Like, Baby yeah. Jada gave her strength, you know? Yes. Yeah. Really I was did. like so touched. I'm like, are you okay though? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we've, yeah. We've met some, um, we've really met some great nice people, people, you know, yourself included Thank you, through, Thank you. through all of this. And, um, we don't got no friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, well, you we, have a new one, right? Yeah. He, like, we, we you have we're a new just, one here. you know, we're just like, like typical, just a, a mom and dad type yeah. of thing, you know? Um, and we've, we've developed some pretty, pretty good friendships throughout this. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, th- maybe, like I said, maybe that is that silver lining in that. Like, yeah. you, know, you can take away some positives. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, literally living like a parent's worst nightmare. Obviously, that you yes. don't want to, you don't want that for yourself, and let alone you don't want that for you know JJ. But I guess you know there is some things you can pick apart from this and, and, and be thankful for. You know, yeah, yeah, like he survived. Yeah. And he can still see throughout, like, he walks now. Mm-hmm. Like, he went from not doing anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, he was a baby all over again. Mm-hmm. We had to teach him how to crawl, how to sit up, mm-hmm. how to walk, uh, everything. No, like, now we're teaching him how to talk again. again. Now we're yeah. teaching him how to talk again. So it's like, if we did it then, we could do it again. And he's doing it even better this time. Amazing. So that's just what I tell myself. Indestructible. Yeah. Yeah. Indestructible <laughs> Literally. <baby. Yeah>. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but one thing that I, I kept thinking about too, again, like I, you'll hear me say this a lot only because so much time, like from when I first messaged you guys yeah. to this point, it's just yeah. thinking about everything, you know, cause there's so much to digest and go and, and, and think of how do we do, like, obviously rightfully so JJ has a lot of attention, you yeah. know, but you also have six other, well, he has the six other siblings. Yeah who's also have to go through this and, yeah. and witness everything. And I'm, you know, this type of traumatic event is going to be damaging, you know, it's going to be scarring. So how do you think, and, and, and not just for them, but for you two, yeah. how are you guys going to navigate this going forward? Like, do you think at some point you're going to, you know, have to visit therapy? We already are. Ready? From like a week after it happened, wow. all of us, PTSD, all of yeah. uh, all that. I, I haven't, he yeah, I haven't really done therapy. It, but yeah. um, but I, I made sure to get the kids in. Yeah, yeah. you know, and um, I get it. Her herself. Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't know. Um, eventually, I, I know it's probably going to be necessary. Yeah, they follow him in the halls sometimes. Uh, I talk to Jose. Really? Yeah. yeah, and he's like, no, yeah, yeah. And there was, he'll well, talk, but they're that they are targeting Jose. Yeah, there was they a, really want to talk to him. Well, there was there was because there was moments like um, at the hospital, like uh, I was having nightmares. Yeah. Um, I was, I was waking up screaming. Screaming, screaming, like I was, I was reliving it, you know? Yeah. Um, so I wake up screaming and mm. the, the nurses, nurses would come in and they caught on to that. Like, they're like, okay, like, what is he this, doing? This happens every time he goes to sleep. And we didn't yeah. call for a lady's therapist. They mm. called for us cause they seen us, you know, like people like in the loony bin and they're like going like this. Yeah. That's, that was us. Yeah. We were doing that, just staring and crying. Just staring and crying and rocking ourselves. Yeah. We didn't shower. We didn't eat. I didn't. I looked like I aged freaking 50 years. Mm. He looked like the biggest bags under his eyes. And we were just constant tears. There's a. It there's, was crazy. Yeah, there's a video that she posted on uh, TikTok, I think. Or I think it's on Instagram, too, where I'm I'm, uh, I'm standing over um, JJ's yes, crib. I did take right? that one. And. Yes. Uh, I think I'd been up like three days that day. And he just mm. kept, he just stared, stood there, just staring at him. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, in the beginning, especially, like, I I, I couldn't sleep mm. because we there was just so much still that was unknown. Yeah. And it's not like the, that, but know. it's legal stuff, too. We were having on our mind and medical stuff. And then our kids, because I feel so bad for them because mm-hmm. they seen it. Yeah. And my son wasn't even there. So when he got when he heard what happened, he felt like the worst brother ever because yeah. that's his only brother. Wow. Yeah. And he felt like mm. uh, if JJ, if, you know, I was home, he wouldn't have had to play with the girls. Mm. He wouldn't have been playing with the girls. So he would have been in my room playing with me. Yeah. So he felt guilty. So, you know, our kids go from playing with JJ, seeing him, like they saw him mm-hmm. and then seeing us, you know, hearing me freak out, hearing me saying he's dead, he's dead. And then we, we're, we're gone. Right. And that's it. No JJ, no mom, no dad. You know, grandma, grandpa, and Diaz are here. But what's going on? You yeah, know, the whole, what, the whole they um, got their whole life got ripped apart. Yeah. And we have to wait from them. So it's they're, yeah. they're going through a lot too. The whole family dynamic just completely changed. changed. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I, I think that, you know, going forward, you know, therapy is going to be something that. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're gonna need it for your software. I mean, they're going. I mean, they're it's, going everybody's it. gonna process stuff different. You know what I mean? And it's still like we're. I'm not gonna say we, but you guys are still like it's still so new. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah it really is. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you. You know, it, it might need therapy a year from now. You might need it five years from now. You know, 
But um, I yeah, I think that it is really a good idea for, you know, the rest of the kids to, to, to yeah. have Well, that. actually, Paul does Taekwondo. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't yeah. want to do therapy. He wanted to do Taekwondo. Maybe that's, that is a form of therapy. And I noticed he feels better. He feels confident. And he's like, Mama, I'm gonna, I'm, oh, and he taught JJ how to do Taekwondo. Not when you say, JJ, mm-hmm. Taekwondo to mommy. He, goes, he does this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he does that. So, I mean, I think it's just something that he can do with JJ to bond with him and mm-hmm. Yeah, so all of them are doing their little thing, yeah. and the girls mainly are doing therapy. Though they got real bad PTSD because mm-hmm. they've seen everything. Yeah, I mean, but as parents too, it's like you guys are the the rock and the foundation yeah. of everything, and and if you guys aren't right up here, you know, it has a trickle effect to yeah. the kids. Really you know does. what I mean? So, yeah. um, like for you guys, how are you maintaining throughout this process? I mean, I'm I'm you know obviously being you know not too far moved from it, but you know a couple yeah. couple weeks, almost two months now, right? Yeah, I move for it. I know it's different, you know, but how are you guys doing as parents? Um, we're doing better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, when I'm home, I'm not. When I'm here at the hospital, I feel like I'm okay because I'm with JJ. Yeah. But when I'm home, I hate to be in my room because mm. I look at that window. And it's the same curtain that blue when like revealed my son. Mm. Like, I don't know how to explain it. And then when I throw away the garbage... It's literally, I'm standing right where my son was. Mm -hmm. So it's like hard to be home. It's so hard. And then sometimes the kids will like knock on the door and I'm in the shower and they're like, mom, are you almost done? And I'm like, oh my God, I haven't done my hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I catch myself just standing and just staring and just thinking of everything a lot. And that's why I'm like, I need to call my therapist. So I'm like, I need to do this. I need to do that. So my kids do notice. They do notice that I'm different. Mm -hmm. And they do, they do ask a lot of questions like, are you okay? Is JJ okay? Like when I'm sad or I'm quiet, they automatically say, mommy, is there something wrong with JJ? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, yeah, he's fine. He's, he's great. He's doing great. But it's like me yeah. at the after effects. And then I know with him, he was the one holding JJ. He's mm-hmm. the one that fought off the dogs. He's mm-hmm. the one that kept him alive mm-hmm. until they got there. Like, what the heck does he go through? Yeah. Like, and I really wish he would open up. I think in due time, more. you know, yeah. I think in time it, it'll, it'll come, you Me know? Me too, yeah. It's just, it's, uh, uh it's just processing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. processing. You're right. Yeah. Like I said, that's what everybody's going to process yeah. it different. And it could, it don't have to be right now, next month or be a year from now, you know what I mean? And, and that's something that, you know, you guys can confide in yourselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. But our, our, our oldest is really liking the, the form of therapy she's chosen. So yeah. if it, she's, she's, she's come along. Yeah. Way. She's come a long way. That's like the other thing. day, the other day she, uh, she, she came out of the room and she was in shorts. Yeah. And, and in a smiling. shirt, in and, a shirt. <laughs> she's been in like big, like this sweater. Yeah. This is my sweater. So, <laughs> so and in like big old sweats. And I'm like, what the heck? Not my yeah, and the other day she, yeah, <laughs> she came out and she was smiling and she was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and mm-hmm. I was just like, okay, that's that's the Sophie I know. It's yeah. coming together then. Yeah. yeah. And she's doing her dorky TikTok dances. There you go, yeah. yeah. It's back to me taking their phones away to do their chores because they're over here doing freaking dances. TikToks. <laughs> and it's like, it's coming back. Everything's getting back to normal. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, that and, I, you know, the, with the progress that JJ is making and everything, you know what I mean? It's It's... It's a beautiful thing, man. It's yeah, a beautiful thing. It really is. Um, I, it could have easily gone a whole different way. Yeah. No, I mean, and then this is why. So these little, the conversations that we're having about, you know, with, with his siblings and everything. Yeah. I, I think, like I said, um, all the attention that baby JJ gets, rightfully so, you know, but they, they are also the ones that are dealing with a lot of stuff too. So yeah. it's, it's good to hear about them, you know, being normal and, yeah. Yeah. and getting, a, you know, a somewhat of a sense of normalcy throughout this. But, you know, JJ has a, a long recovery road ahead of him. Yeah. And that I don't think a lot of people know to the extent, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people that are like. Like his head still is exposed. We, yeah. One of, the, like there's a lot of, one of the questions that gets asked like almost every day is, will you still be posting when you go home? No. Will you still, and that's just, <laughs> it's like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, um. He's not at like his road to recovery is still years until he years gets married. Making, I'll keep you know? posting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But, no, I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like when we when we get discharged from the hospital, he's not magically better. Right. You know? Um. 
that are still different. Sur- like he has a surgery right after he gets in four surgery. weeks. He has yeah. surgery. You know, he gets he his next sur- big surgery is it's on, on actually pretty big. Yeah, on yeah. Uh, June sixth. Yeah, you know, um, and it's gonna it's these things are gonna keep happening. You know, um, his nose. So like I said, his nose was repaired using his rib, mm-hmm. which means his nose isn't like a real nose. Yeah, like, it's not like so, organic. I guess. Uh, yeah. There's gonna be there's gonna need to be revisions made throughout mm-hmm. the years as he grows to his nose mm-hmm. so that it fits his face and things like that, and uh, yeah, I think I think uh, people have a misconception mm-hmm. that you know like it's oh, just all gonna be that yeah, yeah that the discharge is just like oh it's all better now there you go. it's really it's you know, all better now it's, it's like really not. no there you go now you gotta make sure you keep up and make sure he gets better yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Well, that's why I uh, also too. It's the goal for the people that don't know the. There's so much stuff that they're gonna need so much help with, and JJ is not yeah. just getting. It's not just immediate help. It's not just like oh, this is temporary thing. He's gonna need extensive surgeries, yeah, yes. appointments, driving, um, help, babysitting, food. There's so much stuff that goes into it. You know that yeah, that all the, that's with all this stuff. The funding and stuff helps. You know, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, and then one of the one of the um, one of the questions that a lot of people well, not questions. It's a comment that's been made a couple of times. Is like, you know, you've met your goal on GoFundMe. Why is it still open? The the whole thing yeah. with that was uh, um, the original. Well, we've always said to begin with. We've always said uh, we don't have a set goal. Yeah. So we don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes if, sense. If somebody, yeah, yeah, if somebody out there knows, gross, yeah, yeah, that's like saying, can you put a price on what you want? Yeah. What you want your son to be fixed at? Yeah, it's yeah, like exactly. if somebody knows the set amount, go ahead and tell me because that'll, so that'll ease my mind. To put the goal at, yeah. you know. Um, but like the original goal was um, that was made with very little knowledge of yeah. the situation. Yeah, yeah. We had you no know, um, idea. we didn't really know very much about the situation yet. Mm-hmm. Um. We knew enough to know that we gonna we were gonna need a lot of help. Yeah. And uh now that we kinda know more, we still don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, I mean technology like is always advancing. Like a million yeah. that, already. That money is also could be like we don't know five years from now you he can have like prosthetic this, prosthetic that, and he can mm. have a literally hair growth. So yeah. and that could fund that. Yeah, that yeah. because forward. honestly insurance doesn't pay for cosmetic stuff. Yeah. That's all out of pocket and literally everything while well, most of the things that JJ needs to live like a normal life is cosmetic. Yeah, a lot of them. Like are, his teeth to eat. Yeah, cosmetic. To eat, yeah. A lot of them are not considered medically necessary. Mm-hmm. So insurance ain't going to cover it. Yeah. Like his hair, how how are you going to argue that that, that him medically needing hair is that. medically necessary? I mean, yeah. come on. Everybody yeah. deserves um, hair. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's such a long road ahead. And uh, I, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't. I don't even really understand it, so I don't. I don't expect anybody else to because right. it's it's we're we're only a few months in. Yeah, he's made a lot of progress, but there's still so much more. But work there's to do. yeah, there's still a whole yeah, other world. Everything we have to do, I mean, like babysitting and then driving, because where we live, it's about what, like forty minutes away mm-hmm. from where JJ's at. Mm-hmm. So that's gas. That's time away from our kids, mm-hmm. and then food. And then you, and then he was like, "You gotta go back to work." Yeah, and, and then it's like, and it's gonna be you. So well, like, and then I wasn't getting, out. I wasn't getting, I haven't been making any money this they whole time. They didn't pay him this whole time. Wow, yeah. he was not getting paid, not one. FMLA paycheck. in Oklahoma doesn't pay. They wow. don't pay for yeah, that. So all, in Oklahoma, basically, if if you're on family medical leave or something, yeah. it's just like, oh well, you know, your job is secure, but you gotta you figure still have it insurance, out. Insurance, but wow. not not vision or dental, just yeah, yeah, medical. I, I, see, that's another they thing. even I didn't took know off that vision and dental. My 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 tooth got cracked mm-hmm. and it was hurting. Yeah. So I was like, man, I need to go get this fixed. And uh, when I went, they're like, you don't have insurance right now. I was like. Wow. What do you mean I don't have insurance right now? I know I have insurance right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, so it's oh. paying for JJ right no, now. Then I, then, <laughs> I, then, I, then I told them that I was like, I'm on, I'm on FM. They're asking about my job, and I was like, Well, I'm on, I'm on a leave of absence right now. And they're like, Oh, well, that's why. You, you know, you don't have dental until you go back. Mm. And I was just like, wow. so I was like, Insurance is helping with yeah. some things, but I mean, there's a lot of we've already gotten bills, a lot of out of pocket that we got to pay. It's out, of, yeah, all those expenses, man. It's so a lot. this is what helps, you know, fund everything. So. Yeah. Um. We'll, then, we'll we'll be able to blast out all this. Yeah. Like once we this comes out, and I'll tell you guys when you know off air when this comes out, and we'll um we'll blast out everything. And I, like I said, my main point um my 
my reason to come be here was to give you guys a chance to, to give to tell not just your side of the story, but just for you to actually vent a little bit, you know, yeah. and hopefully help you guys out a little bit. And but also to to raise as much awareness as you guys can. Yes, yeah. yeah. this can I'll, happen to anybody. You guys are gonna notice like a shift too, because um, I'm gonna start doing this thing. Uh, like I don't know if it's gonna be daily or weekly, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna I'm gonna start posting like a uh, a daily or a weekly mm -hmm. dog attack fact. Mm, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, just kind of um. Because what happens to JJ is opening a lot of eyes, but it's not opening a lot of eyes past JJ. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people need to see, like, like our lives got changed in a matter of 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, and they can happen to anybody. Yeah. Matter of fact, that, that day, that morning, I was in the bathroom, you know, what everybody's doing, just sitting there scrolling. Like, <laughs> I'm just literally just sitting there scrolling. Mm -hmm. And I come across a video of... Yeah. Uh, a little boy that was walking to school and he was being attacked by two Rottweilers. And he tagged mm. me in it. And oh, I, remember, I think I saw it. Yeah. And I was, so I was video. watching that, that, that morning and I was just like, man, I don't know what I would do or like, I hope that's Literally, never my kid. Hours mm -hmm. later, it was our kid. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really important for people to understand, you know, like, especially when it comes to dog attacks and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that can change your whole life mm -hmm. super fast. Oh yeah. And sure. dogs are like, um, the reason that we chose to pursue dog therapy with them mm -hmm. and try to like exposure therapy and how try to help them get over that fear of dogs and mm -hmm. stuff is because there's not a single street in the country where there's not, where there's not a dog. That's yeah. inevitable. You know? you, yeah. The, they're, they're not even legal in the town we live in, but yet they're everywhere. Yeah. So it's like, you can't even, well, just a certain breed isn't legal, but yeah. it's like, you can't avoid dogs. There's yeah. strays all over the place. Animal control can't even keep up with it. You know what I mean? So the it's cops like, aren't even trying to. Yeah. The cap, the, obviously the cops aren't trying to. Yeah. So it's like, we needed to do that for JJ's and we figured it was best with a licensed therapy dog in a professional setting where, you know, if he did react a certain way, we had the help there and we knew what, we would know what to do the like the right way and, with therapists and all that. So. Doing so much preparation went into that. So like when I we posted prepared it, for that, yeah. it wasn't just so, like a random. We prepared. So when when yeah. I posted it, and then some people, there was actually a lot of people at first that were like, "Why would you do this to him?" And this and that. It was like you have no idea oh, how yeah. much work went into this. You don't even have any drive bys. That's we call it drive bys. We would put JG in his stroller, and the amount of work it puts to have him in his stroller. You got to hook up his oxygen. Mm -hmm. You got to put a, the thing on his toe and all that. So we put him in the stroller, and then we were like, "Okay, the dog's over there." Let's just pass by. If JJ mm -hmm. turns around and looks at the dog, then we'll see after that. If he doesn't look, okay, we'll try again next week. That's not, literally what we did yeah, for about not, like not four just weeks. That, not just that. It was daily, daily meetings with psychologists. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of going over his behavior mm -hmm. and that his day. mannerisms and stuff and trying yeah. to figure out if it was a good idea to begin with. You know, well, It's a and, confidence booster you know, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. started off like... Um, we started off saying the word in front of him, mm -hmm. you know, saying the word in front of him. And, and JJ's a smart kid. Yeah. You know, he hear it and he's like, he's looking. Yeah. Like, Oh, you know? And then, uh, then we started. So after like saying the word in front of him, then it was showing hearing a picture and hearing barking. Yeah. Yeah. And then showing the picture. Mm -hmm. And then after showing the picture, it was like a stuffed animal. And then after a stuffed animal, it was, uh, uh, like a video, mm -hmm. you know, and we slowly worked our way up into the full exposure of the dog and then yeah. we didn't even just try to take him straight to it we did like the little drive bites yeah we went by and if he one there was two times where he didn't even notice the freaking dog yeah and, and, that, like, and that was really like, we did all this and he smart. didn't even notice the dog yeah. that's a smart that's a smart yeah. uh, build like a build yeah, up we, and that's yeah. a we did confidence build baby that was, steps we literally so many baby steps that was a really yeah. proud moment you know but I mean, you know what the, because in the beginning he was in the icu and he was asleep but he was oh, yeah. awake. You know what I'm saying? Like he was yeah. on a paralytic, but like, so his eyes sucked. can move. His eyes yeah. and and but there were times where he he couldn't even open his eyes, but you just seen tears rolling down. He was mm -hmm. awake, and then his heart rate would go up, and it's because he was either in pain or scared. Mm -hmm. So they'd have to like up his dose and put him back to sleep, kind of thing. Yeah. That was the hardest thing. But that happened one time when we were like, let's put sounds for him so he's not just hearing us talk about this or hearing us crying mm -hmm. so we put on um like nick jr and papa Cho came on 
Mm-hmm. And there was like barking and he freaked out. No. Like he freaked he out. He moved. He was on he was on paralytic okay. drugs and he moved. We were like, what? He wasn't supposed to move. Subconsciously he heard yeah, it. Yeah, he, he heard, heard it. And then he there was tears. And we're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, turn it off. And the nurses came in, the monitors went off, they had up his dose, and we did not ever put Paw Patrol for a while <laughs> and that, until we started this little process. And now yeah. he watches it. He has a a uh, portable DVD player that mm. is Paw Patrol and he loves it. So it's oh, like a he's that, come a yeah. long way. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys are you guys are strong to yourself too, you know what I mean? So he obviously gets it <laughs> from from some good guidance, I would say. Yeah. And um yeah, I I I just man, I I I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like I'm thankful and I'm happy that he's he's come this far and I'm thankful that I get to see him. I'm thankful that um, we get to have this conversation and, you know, in, in hindsight, you know, like I said, I, I did feel guilty yeah. at first because I, I waited so long, yeah. but, um, you know, maybe it was just all about timing because, yeah, you know, you yeah. guys are coping with it a lot better, I'm yeah. sure, than we yeah, did. Yeah, imagine back then we would have yeah. been like, eh. Back, back, then, back then I would have been a mess. <laughs> yeah. That. And that's, a, yeah, but understandably so, you know. Yeah. Um, so I got a few uh, things that I, you know, want to give you. Unfortunately, some of them are still <laughs> in Kick City, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you two out this. But one thing I, I did want to show you yeah. is um, I had uh, made a request, um, and I'll, I'll play this for you, and we'll, we'll put it in the video too. Um, I just have to move the video. So um, my I told you uh, off air that the, my mom, you know, former librarian in, in, in Greenfield, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and now we live in San Lucas, and um, there's a library in San Lucas. She's She works there now too. I had asked... Um, if all the little kids there wanted to get together, make a little poster for JJ oh. and send a little message. So they <laughs> they send a little message from, this is from the, the kids in San Lucas. I'll press play for you. <laughs> Hi, JJ. Hope you feel better. Hope you feel better. Love from the San Lucas Library. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, gonna, the, we have the we physically have the poster too. Oh. Um, we'll we'll have it sent to you guys. Like I said, I was gonna was supposed to come with me, but it got left in city. But I'm gonna text you it too, so that way you guys can have and you guys can show JJ. Yeah, show awesome. <laughs> Thank and, you. Um, and then I'll show you the stuff we have right here too. But um, like just like I wanted to say, you know, how much I'm thankful for you guys and hang in there. And like I said, um, this isn't just as you're gonna document JJ's his story going forward we're not going to stop either supporting and everything so you always have a home with us and I'm, i'll definitely want to tap in and do another video you know in the All future right. um but if you want to tell the people one last thing you know how they can help um and just anything you want to say yeah well uh, obviously you know we want to want to thank everybody that's uh supported supported us and jj throughout this whole tragedy um we're extremely grateful for all for all of it for all the, you know the likes the shares the comments the donations the meal the, train the mugs the, the everything shirts, um yeah everything it's... we're yeah we're we're so grateful you know we definitely feel the love mm-hmm. um jj does too <laughs> um yeah I, I can't tell you i can't tell you guys enough yourself included how, how much we appreciate you guys and um yeah, just continue to follow follow JJ's story because he's not done. Not done. You know that boy is that boy's going places. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, again, um, I'll have all the GoFundMe information um, in the in the uh, show notes. We'll have everything blasted out. So if you guys can, please have it in uh, in yourselves in your heart to uh, you know be thankful first of all <laughs> for a lot of this stuff. Um, please respect them and I hope you, you know, listen to them from directly from them and it changes your perspective on a lot of things if you had that, you know. Yeah. So yeah. thank you guys. This has been another episode of the Hypocritical AF Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Albert Fig with Cassandra and Jose Rodriguez. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Peace.